Good morning, Year 2. In today's Tuesday's English lesson, we are going to be finishing off our Imagine a Street poem plan. I hope you had lots of fun yesterday, really using your creative imagination to think of the different things that we are going to include in our poem. So today, we are going to finish off the final three, three boxes of our plan. So we're going to do Miss Billick's together, and then it will be your turn to finish off yours. So thinking back to yesterday, in my plan, I have already included the road, the door, and the roof tiles. So I remember using thick red boiling lava for my road. When I step through the wooden door, I enter a magical wonderland filled with delicious oozy chocolate waterfalls. And then for my roof, they are made out of sticky rainbow candy canes. So today, we have got the final three ideas that we're going to be changing today. So, I'm going to start with the windows of the buildings and the houses. So, remember for our Imagine a Street Poem children, we are really using our creative imagination for our poem. So, for the windows, I know in 1666 they were made out of tiny panes of glass. But remember, our poem, we are going to be changing that. So, it might be that your windows are made out of bubble wrap. It might be that your windows are made out of tin foil. Miss Billick's windows are going to be made out of mirrors. So when people walk past, they can see themselves in the mirror. So remember, just a quick sketch. No laughing at Miss Billick's drawings. A quick sketch and my window. So each part of my window is going to be a reflective mirror. So again, once I've done my quick sketch, the most important thing is those adjectives to help me with my writing of my poem tomorrow. So I know mirrors are very shiny. So that's going to be my first adjective, shiny, reflective mirrors. Okay, and then I'll come back to colour that in once I have finished my two boxes. So I've done my windows and now I'm going to move on to the people. So we know during 1666 in the Great Fire of London, the people were terrified, screaming, crying, trying to escape the fire and trying to escape London. So I'm going to think about the people and I know those people would have been crying. So I'm going to imagine what their tears would be. It's not going to be tears, I'm going to change it. So I'm going to draw their eyes and I think, let me think of some really good, imaginative, crazy ideas, thinking outside the box. So I think I'm just going to draw two eyes. It could be that they are crying bubbles. It could be that they cry diamonds. It could be that they cry sand or baked beans. Miss Billick's idea that they are going to cry fairy dust. Okay, so I'm going to write fairy dust, but then I've got to think of some adjectives to describe the fairy dust. So instead of tears coming out their eyes, they're going to cry fairy dust. And I'm going to describe my fairy dust as sparkly and glittery. Well, that'd be very cool if that would happen in real life. So I've got my windows. They are made out of shiny, reflective mirrors. And then the people are going to be crying sparkly, glittery fairy dust. And then the final part of my plan I need to do is the horse and cart. So during 1666, people used to get around the city in a horse and cart. But for my Imagine a Street poem, I am going to change that. So I'm going to write horse and cart at the top. So I know that that is the idea that I'm changing. And oh, let me have a think. What could people get around on? Oh, they might use a unicorn and a carriage to get around the city of London. They might 
travel with a seahorse on a shell. I think I'm going to change mine to, oh, instead of a horse, I think mine is going to be a hippo because I can think of some really good adjectives for a hippo. And they are going to travel around in a treasure chest. So that is my crazy imaginative idea. So I'm going to quickly draw my treasure chest. And remember children, the crazy ideas, the better, because I want to see your fabulous imagination. Okay, so that's my treasure chest. And then I'm gonna draw my reins and then the treasure chest is going to get pulled by the hippo. Now, no laughing. Miss Billick's not very good at drawing, especially a hippo. So the main idea is that I'm getting the ideas down and my adjectives. Right, so quick sketch. Right, that's my hippo. I know it doesn't look like one, but I'll make it grey in a moment. Or it could be a pink hippo. So I am going to describe my hippo as fat and ginormous. So a fat ginormous hippo. So that's my expanded noun phrase for the hippo. And then I'm going to describe my chest as a golden treasure chest. So now I have got my final three ideas down, I can now go back and I can add some colour. So your first job, children, is to think, what are my windows going to be made out of? What are the people going to be crying during the Great Fire of London? And then instead of a horse and cart, how are the people going to travel around the city of London? Remember, just jot a quick sketch down and then the most important thing are your adjectives to describe. So by the end of Tuesday's English lesson, we should all have a completed plan for our Imagine a Street poem. And we're going to use this to help us write our poem in tomorrow and Thursday's English lesson. So remember, everyone should have a quick sketch in every box. And the most important thing is having your imaginative, creative adjectives to go with it. I hope you've had lots of fun designing your Imagine a Street poem. Miss Billick's had lots of fun using her imagination. So you need to keep this safe because tomorrow we're going to need this to help us write our Imagine a Street poem. See you tomorrow, children. Bye.